This week's episode of In The Groove is brought to you by Chord Limited. Those design guys at CMB Creative, producers of Draconian Switch Webzine and You could be called an eccentric kind of person, artist and that's kind of endured through the years. You, you haven't um, really changed in that you still um, maintain that same kind of approach to life. How is it now that you're 39, you seem to have the same approach to life and what kind of toll this whole the world taking on your body and the aging? Okay. Uh... I've, I've, um, my, the, just the other day, I was in an interview and someone said that Michael Jackson um, aligned himself with Peter Pan. Mm. You know, uh, like that never aging, always spontaneous, always um, questioning and always l learning something. Mm. Or, you know, the ability to just um, abandon five years of old stories and keep regurgitating old stories and try and find new experiences. Mm. Uh, I um I try to keep it fresh. I don't know. I don't even have I don't even have clothes older than five years old. I mean I might have a favorite shirt, but I, I try to um stay stay a, a, a beat and and current. Mm. You know? But you find that that there's a struggle to do that, or is the, is 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 there a natural aging that you're fighting that we fighting that you're resisting? And that you want to be that fresh, that idea of fresh, young? No. Um, I think you, you could just be. You, you, can't, you can't pretend to be somebody else. Um, I, don't, I don't want to be a 27 year old. I don't want to be an 18 year old. I want to be 39, living in the body that I live in. I mean, I will have the aches and pains, but I still consider that growing pains. You know, like I go, I go hiking regular, and I'll take that trail to Paria, and half of that journey is self-discovery. You know, you need to feel them aches and pains to really enjoy that waterfall when you reach there. You know, because if you just land by the waterfall or get a boat to bring it in, yeah, you would enjoy it. But it wouldn't be as rewarding as when, you know, you actually take that trot. You fall down a little bit, you get back up, you push yourself. You need the drought to enjoy the water. Yeah. yeah. Now um, we, it's hard to take water. The, the, eccent, the eccentric bit, because I remember back in the, when you went back when, when you would wear almost anything. Um, kilt, wraps, anything. tattoos, and You've kept that um, approach to your dressing of yourself. Um, your nail polish, all the different colors on your toes. Well, because it's pretty. It's pretty, yeah. And <laughs> you know, when we, 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 I know from experience that you grow up with you and have people that are not questioning your sexuality, but approaching you on a level that, that is really kind of disrespectful. How do you, you deal with that regular? Um, it, brr, I don't, I, I don't feel the respect because, in, in a way, they have childlike curiosity too. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you go to a movie and there's a scary bit in the movie and people laugh. It's not, <laughs> it's not that they, you know, they just don't know how to deal with an emotion. Mm -hmm. Or they'll go to a, a, a play and there'll be a serious, intense scene and they'll be snickering. I'd be like, oh, how, how they could be so insensitive? But that's just. How they dealing with it, you know? I not um meaning to offend anybody. I just, I just, be, I just think that women have a lot more freedom in expressing themselves. If they feel to be dark and cloudy, they'll um shadow their eyes or wear their hair down. Uh, and I think, I think, I, well, when I'm in, when I'm in a down, down feeling, moody kind of, you know, just. Pull, I need to pull back up myself, I will do something to cheer up me. Wear something bright. Change my nail polish. 
Yeah. I'm only for I'm a wife. And no, it's it's all good. Yeah. Uh, let me go to the the art now. You just come out of seventeen W up at um Sydney. Sydney. The Republic of Sydney. And that was a a, a commercial um showing. Mm -hmm. Right? It was a good exercise. Right? A commercial exploration. How 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 did it go? Um, both artistically and commercially. Commercially, excellent. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have liked all the pieces to um, have been sold, but 30 out of 70 is they still are passed by me. Uh -huh. And yeah, I feel in, I feel good about that because I actually wasn't sure how it would have fly by people. Mm -hmm. I'm real grateful to the fact that they had Erotic Art Week mm -hmm. plumb in the middle of it, so that raised an awareness and a passion and some uh, an understanding but the stuff that I that I do I, I draw I draw a lot of vaginas and I draw a lot of um, heavy heavy topics uh, as far as um, sexual abuse and, and and rape and incest and um, they're all masks masked under um, Ice cream colors, you know uh, that. The, uh, yeah, yeah, it's the same way that like you're hitting somebody hard, but you still want to make it palatable, so that the viewer kind of gets seduced into the image, mm -hmm. rather than it's an upfront. Boom! This is you know sex I'm viewing here. <laughs> so nice. And you know, I have a piece. I have a piece entitled. Um, if 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 you suck it, I'll take it in the ass, right? And. A lot of people just gravitated towards the piece. It's just like, what, where, what's going on? What, is that a hand? Is that a fist? And it's just, it, but it's, it, to me, it's just obvious that there's this, this cylindrical object between a mouth and an ass. <laughs> and people really want to think about food. Well, people really get it. I like that. <laughs> people really get it. The, um. You, you call the work sometimes disposable art, right? And I was saying to somebody the other day, this, this, yes, actually, um, Nisha, who is a gallerist, she owns a gallery, and this idea of art and it being disposable seemed to be counter to opposite ideas. Because when you buy art, you buy something that increases in value and that you have it. If yeah. it was an investment like land or that kind of jewelry. Yeah. Um, you think how did, how does how did that idea of disposable art come up and how how it go in and will it survive? I um used to sketch on uh, with my thumbnail on Saratex cups and one day a friend of mine, Danielle, um Defantala, she was like, You should really keep those cups but I kept throwing them away and just exploring more fingernail into the texture of the Saratex and, and making patterns and I got really intricate stuff out of it but I don't have any today right um, and if I kept it I would have been able to put an exhibition up and showcase Saratex cups maybe somebody would have um, say hey let's print a couple of those or get some of those images embedded on Saratex cups and it would have become a thing um, I've, um, I'm, I'm coming from a, a, found, a foundation as a mural painter and a graffiti artist. Um, the only art that, that I consider permanent art from, from my point of view because out of the industry is tattooing because you're actually creating a mark that's going to be on that person for life and my, my, my feeling is you're really only as good as your last job you know so I try to maintain that kind of intensity um, even if I, even if like the, the mural on um, Cipriani Boulevard for the convo um, that they that they whitewashed afterwards I didn't mind it was an exercise and you, you need to inspire yourself and when you inspire yourself other people feel the vibe and spur you on and encourage you to do other things <laughs> <laughs>